understand in an easy way why such a magnetic motor does not generate free energy, so that you can easily explain it to others using the gravity model method. Roller that spin forever with free energy are still a very convincing power generator. The magnets are arranged to drive the reel, making sustained spinning easy. Just watch this video and you will understand for sure why this great machine is not able to work. Let's first look at the device itself. It consists of a rotably mounted plastic cylinder in which magnets are set at regular intervals. If you look closely, the rows of magnets that are attached to the roller overlap. This is intended to allow or facilitate the transition from one magnetic loop to the next. On the side of the reel is a stand with a very large magnet attached to it. The suspension, the copper steering wheel and the stand on which the roller is mounted is of no further importance to us. What happens when the very large magnet attached to the side is pushed closer to the roller? The magnetic influence of the very large magnet acts on the rows of the magnets on the reel. There is a magnetic repulsion so the magnets on the roller try to avoid it and try to reach a state where the repulsion is at its lowest. The state where the magnets are furthest away from the big magnet. The reel begins to spin and if the system is working as designed, the kinetic energy is sufficient to jump over the part of the rows of magnets where they overlap. Then the process is repeated and the roller accelerates because with each revolution the magnetic repulsion pushes the magnets a little further and therefore faster. Awesome, right? This is a beautiful world as it could be, but isn't. To show the real world, let's first disassemble the device until only the magnets of the roller are left. The way it works is best explained if we break away from the round shape and spread the magnets out onto a flat surface. Of course, we keep the distances and alignment. As you can see, we now have magnetic ramp that overlaps slightly at the beginning and the end. The cumulative force of the magnets in the overlap is designed such that the relative proximity of the inner magnets and the relative distance to the outer magnets should be approximately equal to the force of the magnets outside the overlap. The idea behind this is to have a magnetic field that is only slightly different in strength in the area of the overlap than outside of the overlap, so that the jump over it appears possible. Actually, however, the magnet repulsion will be the highest here. Even if this were not the case, the magnetic maximum would have to be outside the overlap, in the region of the magnet that are closest together. So there will be a magnetic maximum on the reel. And that's the point. In our simulation, we don't let the roller, in example the magnets arranged as a ramp, move. Instead, we run the very large magnet in form of a magnetic ball through the track of blue glass, because it makes no difference which part of the system repels the other. In the first run we let the ball accelerate as the system designer intended. In the second run we assume that the magnetic maximum is in the area of the overlap and therefore the repulsion is highest here. Yes, yes, well, you will say. But your theory is as good as the roller's designer theory. What is the proof? And you are right. The magnetic field is invisible and my argument should be a little better. So let's visualize the magnetic field. Instead of invisible magnetic waves, we just take dips and hills and use gravity instead of magnetism. The effect is almost the same as you can see in my previous videos. Now. Before we can use gravity instead of magnetism to represent forces, we need to see how this comparison works. The hollow in the glass block represents the attractive force that exists between the magnetic fields. The marble ball represents the impact of those forces. The poles of the magnets are identified by the colors red and blue, with red representing the north pole and blue representing the south pole. Different poles attract each other 
like poles, repel each other. In our example, a lateral displacement of the magnets against each other results in the ball actively rolling up the cavity. Force must be used for this, because the ball wants to roll back into the hollow. Even if it's a material such as iron or steel that does not normally have a magnetic field, but is magnetic, a hollow is created because a magnetic attraction takes place. This is shown here by the steel ball. If we bring like poles closer together, the opposite effect results. A hill is formed and the marble ball wants to roll down. The magnets want to avoid each other. In our representation, no distinction is made between several magnetic fields that affect the same object, in this case, the ball. It's all about the total force impact. When a non-magnetic force tries to lift an object out of the magnetic field, it shows up by lifting the marble sphere. The ball wants to continue to follow gravity and falls down into the hollow. In addition, our representation only depicts the strongest magnetic force, as can be seen when the sphere decides to stick to a random magnet. Now, we transfer the mode of action to a magnetic ramp, which, however, works first of all with attraction, since this is the most obvious. You can see the magnets at the top, which are approaching the ramp from the side, and below the depression that is formed as a result of this in the illustrated representation with the help of gravitation. Stronger magnets or magnets placed further together increase the resulting field and thus the deepening of the track. Now look what happens when a whole ramp of magnets lines up. With that in mind, let's now look at our ramp which works with repulsion. Unlike the dips in the ramp, we are dealing with raised areas at the points where magnetic repulsion is greatest. That's where we start the ball. As expected, the ball rolls down the slope, accelerating. Unfortunately, upon reaching the overlap of the magnets where the magnetic repulsion is greatest, the ball does not make it all up the way to the top. The ball rolls back into the deepening and gradually swings out until it stops. In order for a permanent movement to be possible, the ball would have to be permanently in an imbalance, an example roll permanently downhill. So there would always have to be a deeper place to go, an infinitely deep hole and this is inconsistent with the reality outside. With this knowledge in the background, you now form your own opinion. What do we learn from this? This system looks like it is capable of creating a permanent imbalance. But there is no permanent imbalance in our world. There is no such thing as an infinitely high hill and you cannot go on downhill for an infinitely long time. Infinity is probably not part of our universe and so everything tends towards balance. When the roller is pushed, it slows down and eventually rock out, because there is no free energy inside. I hope I was able to shed some light on the magical world of perpetual magnet motors. If you liked the video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you dare. Thanks for watching, have fun!